hello hello out there if anyone's listening thank you for listening the first story i have is from idaho idaho ufo connection the state ranks number one per capita for seeing unexplained things in the sky so they do show that according to satelliteinternet.com that idaho is number one but this is this is per capita of course so take that into consideration uh, what they're looking at is every sighting per 100,000 people. Um, and they even have in here that, you know, um, Idaho has more sightings than New Mexico, which you're looking at the per capita rating there. New Mexico actually ranks fifth in their poll, which I'll, I'll show you the 1 through 50 so you can mark your own state. But we'll go down here, and they talk about how there's been a lot of reports because of the Starlink sy satellite system, which is, which is I think it's it's been reported through all, all sorts of different states. If you go to uh, the UFO uh, reporting center, you'll see a lot of UFO reports that are that basically just say Starlink. That's where they go to. But there actually is two reports that I'll give you here. At about 6.45 p.m., there was a super bright light above the Albion Mountains to the west. I at first thought it was a snowmobile on the ridge, but I saw it was above the mountain. Then all these star-looking objects came from it with perfectly straight ahead, east overhead. They kept coming and coming, probably 30 to 50 of them, almost like they were returning from a mission. My thought is that I had seen a mothership or some sort and it sent out a bunch of smaller craft. I do not drink or take any drugs, so I was not hallucinating. No drugs. Elvis didn't do no drugs. Another report was, I was heading down Broadway to go to Little Caesars and Walmart. Hmm. I remember when I was driving, I looked up at the sky and saw lights, and there was a long oval blackish disc, and right away knew... It did not belong there. I said to myself that it looks like an alien spaceship, then wondered, do any of these cars driving even notice this thing? I remember just staring at it, and it creeped me out. <clears throat> so, those are two reports. And then here, we have a little added bit here. It says, adding fuel to the 2020 U UFO bonfire, the Department of Defense admitted that it was investigating um, unidentified aerial phenomenon, mostly near military installations and ships after the New York Times report from a few years ago. And you also, if you don't know, you have Congress jumped into the UFO fray and demanded that the latest omnibus appropriations bill passed last month, that is the U.S. intelligence agencies and the Defense Department report that finding 180 days from the bill's passage, which is simply the, the one thing that you pretty much going to read on every website right now, that there's 180 days until a whole bunch of UFO documents get, rele get released. Though as of right now... The CIA have dropped a whole bunch of documents on the Black Vault website. So if you're looking for that, there's a PDF to download all of them, which there is a ton. There's over 2,700 pages. I, I downloaded it today, so there's a lot. You have a writer here, Skulls. Um, she's written two books. She says that, of course, you know, when people look in the sky, they see odd things, but not every time they look in the sky do they see UFOs, which, true... It's an accurate statement. Um, she talks about how there's a lot of good UFO researchers out there, which, yes, there are. There's a lot of good serious ones out there. Um, then she talks about her own actual experience, which is that she was staying late after a social distancing barbecue. I don't know what that is. If someone knows what a social distancing barbecue is, that would be nice to know. Doesn't seem very much fun. But anyway, coming from the southeast were a trio of orange amber lights emitting objects. I quickly pointed them out, and all eight of us started stared dumbfounded as these three lights made their way across the sky, heading towards Bogus Basin Ski Resort. As a firm believer in science, I can find no explanation for both the glow and the formation of these flying uh, flying objects. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's her report. And now you have a little bit of a survey here. And they say, um, for 2016, only 27% of Americans believe that aliens have visited our planet at some point in the past. In 2020, an independent poll by Lipsos 
showed that 45% of Americans said that UFOs exist and have visited Earth, SatelliteInternet.com pointed out. So, <clears throat> she goes on to say that, you know, there's a lot of UFOs that can be explained, but of course, you know, you can explain 99% of UFOs away, but all you really need is that 1%. You need one to be right. But, so, in case you are curious, which you may be, here is their ranks of 1 to 50 of the U.S. states on per capita. So, it's like I said, it's, it's citing per 100,000 individuals, and that's how they decided it, because you're going to have, because number 50 is going to be Texas. Texas is a huge state, lots of people, but lots of people, I mean, and they have, you know, 375 um, UFO encounters, or UFO sightings, I should say. Um, they also stated that none of this, none of this has any relation to abductions. There was no statistics done on abductions, so take that for what it is. So there are sightings, but the abduction part, um, that information is left out. They do give you tips, though. Tips for newbie UFO hunters. If your idea of UFO sightings comes from the X-Files or Doctor Who, nothing like meeting some Daleks or some Cybermen to ruin your day. And I, I don't I don't really think about that. Huh. Anyway, a um, little bit of rambling. I hope you enjoy that. Thank you. So my second story is from the website News Talk, WBCK 95.3. So... And it is written by Lacey James. Strange night sightings continue in Allegheny County. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. But just weeks after multiple unexplained sightings of a huge fireball crashed into a lake, another Allegheny County resident comes forward with a strange sighting. 10.45 p.m. January 9th, my daughter and I were traveling... 34th Street towards 108th Avenue and seen a bright green light going towards the field to the right of us, traveling like a shooting star, but was way close to the ground. Did anyone else see this? And they give you a little, little above map here. See what they're talking about. The area where the strange light was seen in the circle was an arrow pointing towards it. The area is near Schaefer Lake, and not far from the location of the huge fireball spotted at the end of December. While many of the replies with theories are as funny as you might imagine, at least one of the persons claimed to have seen something similar at the same time. But near Swan Lake in Cheshire Township, also in Allegheny County, the resident who stepped forward with the sighting stated that her daughter was pretty freaked out over the sighting. Understandably. <clears throat> that's just a quick little quick little story but um if you're interested this this site right here has um fascinating f bigfoot reports from each michigan county and they're not joking about that there is over a hundred it just keeps going um i could read one but if you're curious i'd go here because they have dates ranging pretty much you're looking at three four decades in the past and then current sightings so if, if bigfoot's something you're interested in this this is a ton of information right here the deer stood there for about a minute or two mostly looking to the north and east then turned directly south and walked away shortly after this moment i heard a screaming sound coming from the east the sound had a human quality to it and sounded more angry than distressed i immediately thought my brother-in-law was hollering for some reason as he was in that direction but close not to contact him via radio there were sh several short 10 second screams lasting a little over a minute and then stopped i saw they're completely perplexed having never heard a sound like that before after this i noticed a conspicuous absence of any sound or movement in the forest prior to this the woods had been filled with the sound of tweeting birds and chattering squirrels after this the forest was quite dead this was the most eerie part of the whole event so there you go like a big predator is around the area, so the rest of the creatures of the night, quiet, beautiful sound they make. All right, well, if you're interested, look this up. Thank you. Here's my third story, just a short little quick one here. It's a strange FM signal discovered coming from one of Jupiter's moons. 
Now, they give you that. They say it's coming from Ganymede. But they go on to state that they do not believe that it has anything to do with extraterrestrials. That's the claim at the moment. They say that what it really is, is um, decametric radio waves have frequencies between 10 and 40 megahertz, but never above 40 megahertz. Electrons spiraling in Jupiter's magnetic field are thought to be the cause of the radio noise we hear. So that's the current um, explanation. And they've been getting radio waves from Jupiter since the mid-1950s, but this is the first time the phenomenon has ever been seen emanating from Ganymede. So, take that for what it is. A little short story. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. This is my last story. It's very short, just because I found it looking for haunted things, and this came up as haunted homes. So, in case you're curious and you for some reason want to move to China at some point, if a murder or a suicide occurred in the apartment or the level that you're trying to move into, house or apartment, there is typically a 30%, it's 30% cheaper than a regular old house that something like that didn't happen in. So if you're willing to deal with that and the possibility of a ghost sharing your apartment then uh, you can move to china or 30 percent less i thought it was an interesting story i know it's not totally paranormal but i thought it was interesting if you're still listening thank you and uh, see ya